these professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. Whoa, you're into marshmallow land. It's not a pleasant place to be. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. It looks pretty as a picture here. This really is what I'm looking for. It's lovely. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. Professional master chef, we are looking for a future cookery star. We're looking for a chef, a chef that exudes talent and a chef that will become great. In today's show, the professionals will be set three grueling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarterfinal. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, mm. then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. Today's skills test is they must bone out this pig's trotter. They need to cut straight down the middle, open it up and follow the bone around without tearing it with the knife. When they reach the feet or the knuckles of the trotter, they need to cut through the cartilage, keeping these toes on. Cool, that's tricky. This is a great test for their butchery skills and knife skills. Even if they've never done it before, just to watch them use the knife and use the chef's instinct to follow the bone through, it should be okay. Today's palate test is to make us a lovely sweet crepe or pancake. I want to see them approach these tests now. Let's get them in. First up is 32-year-old Daniel, who's been a chef for 18 years and believes cooking is in his blood. I've always been involved in food. My grand's a great cook, my uncle's a chef, so we've always constantly had food around us. I started from the age of 13 in kitchens, and that's all I know, really. Daniel? Yes. You've got 10 minutes. I've not done a pig trotter before. I understand. Take a deep breath, off you go. Well done, Daniel. You've got five minutes left. Make us a very nice crepe. Thirty seconds. Okay. Come on. I'm going to call time on you. Come on. That's it. Time's up. Daniel, let's start with the trotter. You've never done it before, but I'm so impressed. You've completely gone about it the right way. You took your time over it. You got it off cleanly. I mean, that is beautiful. Fantastic job, Daniel. That's what you call skill in following your instinct as a chef. Well done. Thank you. Right, let's uh, bring in this pancake. Oh, that is lovely. That is really lovely. The strawberries and orange is a fantastic combination. Michelle would enjoy eating that. Sweet, light. Mm. Daniel, off you go. Thank you.
feeling quite pleased actually. Hopefully I've done enough with the skills that I've shown and the flavours that I've produced to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. So I, I hope there's enough to get through to the next stage. New dad Mark dreamt of being a rock star, but his first job as a pot washer opened him up to the world of cooking. I love cooking, I absolutely love it, and uh, I, I consider myself so fortunate to be in a career that I really, really enjoy. Um, it, it's, it's an absolute honour. Mark, you have ten minutes. Good luck, off you go. Mark, have you ever boned out a pig strotter before? No, no, I haven't. Listened. You've got five minutes left, Mark. You've got a minute, so you've got to move it. Mark, you've got 30 seconds. Right, Mark, start with your skill test. Unfortunately, because you'd never done that before, Mark, it's a bit of a mess. Sure. But you did give it a shot, you know, you tried your best. You showed that you have skills with a knife, which is important for me. The problem here is you've torn through it with a knife. You've cut off the actual feet of the pig, which helps hold the form when you're going to roll it together. Sure. OK. Let's have a look at your pancake. The pancake is not cooked, Mark. It's, it's, it's unedible. Personally, I wouldn't want to put cold strawberries in the middle of a raw mix and just uh, cross your fingers and hope that the mix inside was going to cook. It's not the neatest uh, little crepe I've seen. I like the flavours you're putting in there. Strawberry in there's fine, vanilla in there's good, but... Um, the pancake's not cooked, so it's all thick and globby, which is unpleasant. We have more chefs to see. Uh, you're going to have to keep your fingers crossed. Off you go. That could have gone a lot better, definitely. Um, I was thrown by the, uh, the trotter. Today, yeah, it got caught out big time. 26-year-old Neil's first cooking experience was helping out after school at his mum's pub. I've been a chef since I left school and I really want to do this to kind of get further in my career and better myself. Neil, ten minutes. Yeah. Off you go. Good luck. Neil, have you ever bugged a pig trotter? Uh, I haven't, no. Mm. Right, Neil, if you can't do it, I'd like you to put it aside and concentrate on the next task. Neil, one minute. That's it. Time's up, Neil. Right, Neil. You could see by your face you gave up before you even touched that trotter. On to your palate test. First impression, you've burnt the pancake. The first mouthful of that is intense flavour from the berries that you've used. However, you messed it up because the pancake is raw in the middle. That could have been fantastic. Had you made that thinner, that would have worked. I think what you were attempting to do was actually right. Your execution from start to finish is, is questionable. Neil, off you go. Thank you. I'm feeling gutted that I delivered what I did to them. It wasn't great and I'm really disappointed in myself that this happened.
23-year-old Lloyd is the least experienced of the four, but has only ever dreamt of being a chef. I know I can cook, it's just my nerves. If my nerves get to me, I'm going to be a mess. OK, Lloyd, take a deep breath. Ten minutes, off you go. Today will be a big test of my abilities. It's not cooking for anyone, it's cooking for someone who knows their food and you're going to have to prove to yourself and prove to them that you can actually cook. Lloyd, you've yeah. had over five minutes. You may want to consider putting that to one side. You have three minutes, Lloyd. Twenty seconds. You're gonna have to lift it out of that pan. Go on, quick, last action. That's it. Finished. Time's up, Lloyd. Lloyd, I have to say you started really well. I wish that you could let go of your nerves and your fear and concentrate properly. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at your pancake. Interesting method, Lloyd, putting your fruit through the batter. Not necessary, because it will not cook through properly. The batter in the middle of that fruit is raw. The fruit has gone into a, a puree consistency. It's just horrible. I wouldn't even think of serving that to Michelle. Lloyd, you can do a pancake, I know. I know you can. Possibly with your hands shaking, you can't. Mm. Thanks very much for your efforts. Thank you very much. I haven't showed the judges my true potential, but underneath nerves and what was going on, I just did what I could at the time, which didn't seem like it was good enough, but I tried. I always knew the pig's trotter would be a tough task. I always knew that. But I fully expect any professional chef at any level to be out coming here and make a pancake. I am absolutely shocked. There is one chef that stands head and shoulders above the others, and that is Daniel. He had fantastic knife skills. He went through the pig's trotter and he boned it off cleanly. Fantastic level of skill. He had lovely ideas with his pancake. It was thin, it was perfectly cooked, he had nice flavours in there. I would be so happy to put him forward for Michelle. It means a lot to me to go further in the competition. I hope my chances are high enough to uh, go through to the next round and, and even more. I was a little bit disappointed with Mark. But actually, when I consider him against the rest of the competition, he actually looks quite competent. Mark had no idea that the toes were meant to stay on the trotter. The end result was not what I wanted, but he gave it a good go and he showed that he has very good knife skills. His crepe, he put the batter in the pan and then he started cooking it like an omelette. He made a mistake in that he added the berries to the pancake mixture in the pan, which was a silly mistake. But I like the flavours he attempted. Today, I certainly, uh, I certainly don't think I've shown my true potential. There's definitely a lot more to give, and um, hopefully, fingers crossed, I might be able to, uh, to show it. Neil started off really well on that trotter. However, he didn't know where he was going, and he just gave up. Two minutes into the task, and he just lost it. We ended up with a pancake that was nearly as thick as my thumb, and then to top it all off, he went and burnt one side, flipped it over, and burnt the other side even worse. Shocking. The one saving grace of Neil was the flavour he got in those berries. He did manage to cook them with some sugar. It was lovely and sweet. My chances aren't great, but hopefully they will give me another chance to prove that I am a really good chef. Poor old Lloyd, he just looked absolutely petrified. Although he had a pretty decent go at the pig's trotter. He did one side very well. He did show some level of knife skills there. He gave it a good attempt. As for his crepe, it looked awful, it tasted awful. He put the raw fruit into the batter mix before the batter mix had cooked. Now I've just got to wait, fingers crossed, hopefully a bit of luck comes my way. 
This has been really disappointing. What we've got to do is look for the potential. I just hope whoever goes through is going to do better in the next round. The chef that's going to leave us today is Lloyd. Mark, Neil, you are lucky you are going to go through and cook for Michelle. You've really got to raise your game. I'm over the moon about going to cook for uh, Michelle Rue Jr. Uh, I can't wait to do it. Overall, I'm very, very pleased. I'm really surprised to still be in this competition. My food was awful, but I'm still here and I'm going to have to do really well in the next round. I thought I'd blown that massively. Um, really quite shocked that I'm going through. Um, Realised I need to uh, step it up and really improve uh, on what I'm doing. It's day two. Neil, Daniel and Mark are back. And this time they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To get through to the quarterfinal, they have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. Gentlemen, you wanted the right to cook for Michelle Rue. You've got that right. The competition starts now. In front of you, you have a loin of venison. You have 50 minutes to create two different dishes using that loin of venison. At the end of the day, we will have a quarter finalist. It's up to you. This is a chance for the chefs to demonstrate their versatility. Their larder includes mushrooms, cranberries, cabbage, baby carrots, parsnips, sweet potato, watercress, dark chocolate and juniper berries. They also have a selection of plates to give Michelle a sense of their presentation skills. They have a beautiful loin of venison. Such a versatile piece of meat, it can be cooked beautifully pink, it can take great flavours. However, one of the dishes has to have a great sauce, otherwise there'll be no excuse. Sweet flavours match venison very well, but they've got to be careful. I don't want to see this venison turn into a pudding. Taste and texture is paramount, but presentation is as important. I want something that's going to really prove to us that these guys are at the level that we want. I think to be a top chef, you have to be dedicated, you have to be motivated, you have to be willing to put in the hours. To win MasterChef would be amazing. The possibilities that go on from that in terms of career um, are endless. All right, Mark, so what are you cooking for us today? Half the venison loin that I'm going to do is uh, capaccio, and then the other half of the loin I'm going to roast, serve with some um, soto sweet potato, and hopefully some parsnip crisps. How are you hoping to make a real mark? Just by showing my, uh, my style, showing that I'm uh, passionate, for me, chefing is, uh, if you enjoy food, you've got that passion. It's the most amazing job in the world. Halfway point. You've got 25 minutes left. I became a chef because my mum always used to work in a pub. I saw what was going on behind the scenes then, and it just kind of went from there. Cooking's more than just a day job. It's a passion. I love doing it and I feel really good when I produce something really good. Right, Neil, what are you cooking for us today? Um, I'm cooking venison capaccio and to follow, seared venison with uh, red wine and juniper sauce. What do these dishes say about you then, Neil? Not overcomplicated, great presentation. We're looking for uh, great chefs. Do you have something that makes you stand out? I'm a confident person, a confident chef. I kind of feel at home with cooking. It's great. I love it. It's, it's me. I think that's great, Neil. Well done. I think that's lovely. You've 
got 10 minutes left, guys. You've only got 10 minutes. My culinary ambition would be to be working at Michelin star level. With fine dining, I love the attention to detail and the presentation. I'm definitely a perfectionist in the kitchen, and I tend to be quite hard on myself, and, and that sort of pushes me to achieve and excel. All right, Daniel, do you know what you're cooking for us? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do a carpaccio of peppered venison and a cranberry vinaigrette. Mm. Uh, then I'm going to do pan-seared uh, venison with a chocolate jus and wild mushrooms. Where do you see yourself in five years' time, Daniel? Hopefully, I should have my own restaurant is what I'm looking for, and that's where I want to push my, my career. Three minutes left. Sixty seconds left. Time's up, that's it. Time's up. New Dad Mark hopes his first dish, carpaccio of venison, wild mushrooms, watercress salad and honey dressing, will prove he was right to give up his rock star dream. It looks nice, looks very appetising. You've seared the outside, so it gives it another dimension and gives it a different colour as well. I, I like that. It works well, the combination of wild mushrooms, watercress. It's just lacking seasoning and some acidity. I think it looks great. Thank you. Good, but not great. It just needs that little extra step to take it to great. His second dish is roasted loin of venison with sautéed sweet potato, creamed cabbage, parsnip crisps and a juniper drizzle. I'm wondering if this is the carpaccio. Because it's incredibly rare. If you're going to service a carpaccio to start, make a difference. Sure. Yeah? However, I like the style. I think it's presented in a modern way with the drizzle of the sauce around the outside. Again, there's some lovely flavour combinations there. The sweet potato has got that lovely sweetness, which works well with venison. But the whole dish, again, is lacking in seasoning. However, the sauce was very good. And when you take a generous amount of that sauce, then it does bring the dish together. Sweet potato and sweet parsnip against the venison is lovely. But the venison needs a little bit more seasoning. I don't think I'm a million miles away from the standards that the judge is looking for. I think uh, it's time to me now to dig deeper, find those bigger flavours, let the food speak for itself a bit more. Neil has made venison carpaccio with mushrooms, watercress and a red wine vinaigrette. Mushrooms are really lovely. It's giving a lovely texture and flavour, an added dimension which I like. It's, for me, lacking a little bit of acidity. You could have been a bit more generous with that dressing. But it's good. Everything, I think, is cooked well. But it's not a flavour explosion. No mistakes on here, but it's not memorable. His second dish is pot roast venison with a parsnip puree, carrots and a juniper and red wine jus. The venison is cooked medium, which is fine. The parsnip puree is a little bit lumpy. The sauce is good, but I think it's a little harsh. It's almost overpowering. One thing that does scream out to me is these little bits on the end of the carrot here that you've not chopped off. Those little details, they make the difference. And, and that's what's missing here. Very nice ideas, but not quite. I can see where you're going with it. I like where you're going with it, but you failed to execute it. I haven't shown my full potential today. I just wish I could have just refined it and just made it that little bit better for him. Perfectionist Daniel's first dish is seared peppered venison carpaccio with a watercress salad and a cranberry vinaigrette. This is lovely presentation. 
that's delicious. I have never come across using cranberries as a dressing or a, a vinaigrette. It works beautifully well. Thank you. Well done. <clears throat> yeah, yum. There's good seasoning around the outside of that meat and that fruity acidity that you've got in that cranberry vinaigrette is lovely. Perfect matching. And I'm getting a little pepper kick at the end of this as well. That works. His second dish is roast venison loin on sautéed mushrooms and leeks with a sweet potato puree and chocolate jus. Right, Daniel, I'm not a fan of this splashing of sauce in, in different directions. Uh, it, it, it's messy. Your venison's got a lovely seared outside, which is nice. The chocolate sauce is almost a chocolate sauce that you could have as a dessert. Chocolate should be there as a, just as a scent, as a flavouring. That mild onion flavour of leek that you get is really nice. And it goes into sweet potato, it starts getting a little sweet. When it hits chocolate as well, whoa, you're into marshmallow land. It's not a pleasant place for the venison to be. When they gave me the comments back about my carpaccio dish, um, maybe I didn't show it my face, but inside I was bursting with joy. Well done. Off you go. These guys are a good standard. Very good standard. Best presentation for me by far was Mark. He really does understand how to put a good-looking plate together. However, both his plates of food needed a little bit more flavour and oomph given to them. All he needs to do is match his presentation skills with the flavour. I think my chances at the moment are, um, are still one in three to go through to the next round. I think everyone had good points and bad points. I think it's still, um, still uh, open for anyone, really. Neil has the right ideas. I like the combinations he's putting together on a plate, but there are silly mistakes. He needs to brush up. The sauce was far too bitter. We've got long, stringy points on the carrots. He needs to pay attention to the finer details. It's those little things that make the difference. I've got one more chance to prove to him that I'm a good chef, so I'm going to take my time and just give it all I've got, and hopefully I can impress the judges and make it through to the, to the next round. I loved one of Daniel's dishes, and I really disliked the other one. I really enjoyed Daniel's carpaccio of venison. That particular dish showed to me that he understands balance of flavour and textures. And that dressing of the stewed cranberries, for me, was a revelation. So from one real high point with the carpaccio, we slipped to a real low point with his main dish. The chocolate sauce was almost the kind of chocolate sauce you could serve with a dessert. It was far too sweet and far too chocolatey. He can't afford to be up one minute and down the next. He needs to deliver two very good plates in the next round. I need to be a bit more consistent to get to the next stage. And hopefully I'll be able to up my game and push my dishes forward so that I can impress Greg and Michelle Rue Jr. Any young chef wishing to climb up the ladder needs to understand the classics, not just for the taste, but for the technique, the skills required to achieve these great recipes. In front of you, you have the ingredients for two great French classics. The first one is a mouclade, a creamy mussel stew. The second recipe we want you to cook is an apple charlotte. Two classic recipes, one quarterfinal place. It's yours if you want it. Good luck, off you go. Mouclade, translated, is mussels cooked in a light, creamy sauce, flavoured with curry or saffron, with shallots and parsley and white wine. A truly delicious dish. <laughs> to get the full flavour of the mussel, you have to steam them with the white wine and the shallots, and then add the cream, but not too much, just enough to make it lovely and velvety. And a pinch of curry, just for seasoning, not overpowering. The mussels are taken out of the shell. I don't want to see mussels that have been overcooked and chewy, and I also do not want to see mussels that have been torn apart. They have to look beautiful. 
Their second classic is apple charlotte, a dessert which dates back to the 18th century. It consists of a thick fruit puree poured into a round mould lined with slices of buttered bread. The secret to a great apple charlotte is that the apples have to be fully cooked inside and the bread must be golden brown and crispy. The chefs need to understand that they have to overlap the bread slightly when they're lining the mould. If you don't overlap them, when you turn the apple charlotte out, it will collapse. You've done these before? Um, I lasted the charlotte probably about 12 years ago uh, at college. And uh, how are you with desserts, Mark? It's not my favourite section, um, but uh, I certainly give it everything I've got. You, you do look relaxed and happy. Is this a stroll in the park? No, it's a swan effect, I think. I think on top it's all looking nice and calm. <laughs> Underneath it's um, kicking like mad. I fear for the apple charlotte. He's piled in about four slices of bread at the bottom of this mould. We're going to have a whacking great big stodgy apple charlotte. You are halfway, gentlemen. You have 40 minutes left. Right, Neil, do you understand these recipes? I've never made a charlotte before. How are you going to make these dishes look like a, a fine meal? I'm just going to have to try and pull something out and refine my presentation a little bit, make it look good, taste good, and um, I give it my best shot to go all the way. Neil says he's never made a charlotte before because he's lined his mould quite well. However, he's not overlapped the bread, and I worry that when he tips it out, it's going to collapse. You've got just over 15 minutes. What do you think now we are looking for from you? Um, I think most probably just to be consistent and follow the recipe to the tea and keep the tastes um, as they are, I think, and produce the actual traditional dish rather than trying to maybe overpower anything, like a dip in my chocolate sauce. Daniel is calm. Daniel seems to be in control. He seems to know what he's doing. But is he going to put some sort of maddening twist on those dishes and ruin them? Three minutes, just three minutes. Ten seconds, last touches, last touches. That's it, time's up. With a quarter final place at stake, the chefs now need their classic dishes to reach the standards Michelle requires. First under scrutiny is their mouclard. Right, Mark, this looks really nice. It's the way I would want it presented. Very good. The mussels are not overcooked. They're very juicy, tender. Very slight hint of seasoning in there and the pinch of curry. I would say that's on the mark. However, I'm not keen on using just plain bread. It's, it's not right. I was expecting something better than that. But it certainly is an authentic mouclade and uh, a very tasty mouclade. Thank you. Oh, that's really good. Really, really good. You got the flavours right this time, my friend. Well done. You also provided us with some bread, but this time this is a bread that has been sliced and rubbed with garlic, has it? Garlic and grilled, yeah. Uh, which is obviously better than just giving me a slice of baguette. The mussels are lovely, they are juicy and succulent, they haven't been overcooked. I like that a lot. It has just the right amount of seasoning and just the right amount of curry powder. Very good mouclade. It's light, the mussels are sweet, 
and there's a slight acidity there from the white wine. They are very good flavours. There's no mistakes in here, is there, young man? Good work. Thanks. Lovely fried bread. It's been well seasoned and rubbed with garlic. It's very tasty bread. However, your cream sauce is ever so slightly over seasoned, but the mussels and the shallots are perfectly cooked. Thank you. Nicely cooked, lovely texture on the mussels. The idea of that fried bread as a bit of crisp with the soft as that mussel is a very, very good idea. The flavour's too salty, which is a real shame. Take these away. Let's bring in your apple charlottes, could we, and have a look at those. It's the last chance for the chefs to impress the judges. Mark has made creme anglaise to go with his charlotte. Ooh. Well, first of all, that's very, very thick bread. They have far too much bread in there. The apples are not quite cooked enough. They should be stewed and cooked all the way through. Lovely flavours in the apple, though. The creme anglaise, or custard cream, is very good, though. There is a crispness to the outside of your bread, but then that goes into heavy dough. That's caused a real problem for you. Neil has served his Charlotte with custard and Calvados syrup. Right, Neil. Your Charlotte has obviously seeped through the joins of the bread uh, because you didn't overlap them. Your custard's very nice. The apple Charlotte itself, the fact that the bread is not too thick, means that it is enjoyable to eat. So you're definitely on the right track. It still hasn't achieved the level that I was looking for, but it's a very good attempt. Thanks. I love the Calvados heat that's going on in that syrup, but the apples aren't cooked enough. Uh, thanks for making the custard, and the Calvados syrup is a really nice idea. Well done. Thank you. Daniel has also served his Charlotte with custard. Daniel, what a shame there's been a leak in your apple Charlotte, because almost two-thirds of it is perfect. It looks pretty as a picture here. This really is what I'm looking for. It's lovely. The bread is lovely, it's crunchy, very thin, got enough butter in it. The apples, unfortunately, again, are not quite cooked enough. It's almost there. Thank you, Chef. Crispy on the outside, lovely deep flavour of caramel, sweetness and sharpness of apple as a counterbalance. You know, if that apple had been a little bit softer, we would have had a perfect Charlotte. Off you go. Right, now how are we going to pick the bones out of that one? Because I have absolutely no idea. They are so close, it's not funny. Very difficult. We've got three chefs here today who have performed very, very well. Neil's undoubtedly got promise. Uh, a couple of silly little mistakes in the versatility test. His first dish of carpaccio of venison lacked a little bit of seasoning and a little bit of finesse. His second dish of the roasted loin of venison had a few mistakes, but it did look good on the plate. It was well presented. His mussel dish was by far the best mussel dish on the bench. Really nice textures. He put some garlic on the bread for us. Very, very nice. He'd managed to get that lovely full depth of flavour and not over-seasoned and a light creamy sauce. His apple charlotte had leaked all the way around because he hadn't overlapped the bread and uh, the apples were not quite cooked enough. But the taste was good. It wasn't far off. But he gave us a Calvados syrup and a custard that I thought was a fantastic combination. I mean, the lad's got talent. I really hope they've seen enough in me to put me through to the next round. I really want this now and I've just had a taste of it, but I want more, that's the problem. Mark started us off with a carpaccio, which was beautifully presented. However, it looked 
a lot better than it tasted. Mark's second dish of roasted loin of venison I thought was not cooked enough. In fact, it was cooked in the same way as the carpaccio. It was just seared. However, it was well presented. Not enough seasoning, not enough big flavours, but definitely real, real potential. And he did a decent muscle dish. I thought it was very decent indeed. But for some silly reason, he just gave us great big chunks of bread. Come on, I'm sure a professional chef can do better than that. His apple charlotte, he layered far, far too much bread in the mould and we ended up with almost a third of that apple charlotte being just soggy bread. It really was not very good. I'm not sure if I've showed my full potential here today, but, uh, you know, it's one shot, it's one hit, uh, and you have to go with that, really. Ooh, Daniel's had a day of real contrast. He's been up and down like a yo-yo, he has. Daniel, I thought, had a good versatility test in parts. His carpaccio, I thought, was delicious. I really enjoyed that cranberry vinaigrette. I thought that was a revelation. So much so that I think I may even work on it and present something like that in my restaurant. However, his other dish of the roasted loin of venison, I thought, was a disaster. He went completely to pieces with a sweet potato and chocolate sauce with leeks, which so didn't work at all. It was like having Angel Delight flavour in there. It was just awful. I mean, it was hard to know where the guy was. He was brilliant one moment and then the very, very odd the next. So all eyes on him then, I think, for the classic recipe test. His muscles were cooked perfectly, but it was too salty. He gave us a lovely piece of fried bread, though. That was a great bit of thinking because it was a nice texture to go with the soft mussels. His uh, apple charlotte was a triumph. He understood the recipe and delivered the goods there, I thought. It's so nerve-wracking, it's unbelievable. Uh, there's a few schoolboy errors, uh, but I hope it's enough to get me through to the, to the quarter-final. Three very similar, three very good chefs. That much separates them. Chef going through to the quarter-final is... Daniel. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations, Daniel. Thank you very much. Dan did well and he deserves it, but I'm gutted, to be honest. I really wanted to get through to the next round but I will take this experience and just keep on building on it. It would have been, uh, it would have been fantastic to go through um, and uh, to carry on cooking for Michelle Rigg, but I'll take it on the chin. I think, uh, I think Dan did a superb job and, um, you know, who knows, there's always next year. Daniel will be back for the quarter-final to battle it out for the title of professional master chef. I'm just like that. <laughs> Jelly on a plate.